Hey there, I'm Meg, and in this video, I'm going to complete a website audit for a member of my Debug Your Business membership. I'll share more on how you can get your own website audit at the end of this video. Before we dive in, I wanted to share that with everything, the business owner has the right to accept or reject what I recommend. You know your business best. And even though I know what I do inside and out, I understand that not all of my advice may work for you or may resonate with you and that's fine. So in these website audit videos, I always show them to my client before I post them to the public. So if you do check out the website I'm about to audit, it may look a little different because the client may have implemented some of the changes. So with that being said, let's dive in. The website we are auditing today is Healing Birch Studio in Bethlehem, New Hampshire. So before I get into the details, I just wanted to give you a lay of the land. This website is a single page. So I'm just going to scroll through and give you the overview and then I'm going to dive into the audit. All right, let's go back to the top. And I have my handy dandy notes with me that I am going to refer back to. So I actually recommend not having a single page website. This was a super huge trend a few years ago. Some people still do it, some people love it, some people swear by it. If you insist on having one, what I recommend is adding anchors to the top of your website that would bring people down to the section they're looking for. So instead of having to scroll all the way down to the about section, you would have a little navigation at the top somewhere and it would link to those different sections. So that would save people some scrolling. But what I recommend first is to have each of your sections be its own page. So what you're going to do is create all these pages and you're going to add them to the navigation, which is going to appear at the top. The navigation is the links to each of these pages. So how I recommend restructuring the header of this website is scooting this logo to the left here and then moving Healing Birch Studio right next to the logo and then having your pages here. And for pages, I recommend having services and then underneath services, you would have some sub pages, which would be nutrition and herbal medicine, yoga and Reiki. So you would have three sub pages. Then you would have an about page and then book an appointment, classes and contact. So I don't recommend having your contact information at the very top because you want people to follow what's called the client journey on your website or the customer journey if you are a product provider. So when people come to your website, they're likely not ready to buy yet. They need to be nurtured. They need to understand what it is that you do and build that connection with you. So then by the time they are presented with your contact information, they're ready to go. So having your contact information at the top just takes away from some real estate, some valuable real estate, and it just adds a little layer of distraction for your viewers. So again, what I would recommend is scooting this logo to the left, having Healing Birch Studio here, and then having your navigation of pages here. Now, what I would do here, which is super prime real estate, this is the first impression of your website. I would have a full width photo of Tish, the owner. She has a beautiful photo of herself right here. And I know that this, I'm pretty sure I've seen this in her other marketing materials as a wide horizontal image. I love it. I just feel like it really reflects Tish as a person. You build this connection with her because she's looking right at the camera and she's in Lotus Pose so that reflects what she does. So I would have this picture right at the very top here and then I would add a tagline on top of the photo. So superimpose that tagline on top of the photo. I would be more specific than this. So when you have a tagline or some kind of a headline on your website or really any marketing material for that matter, you want to connect with your target audience. So you want these people to understand what you do and who you do it for. So we'll get into this a little bit more as we go through Tish's website. But basically, 
what does Tish offer? What problem does she solve and for who? Let's say does Tish work specifically with women on weight loss because that's the first thing that comes to mind. So if that is Tish's target market, I would mention that. So something like helping you release those, helping you release that excess weight through natural methods something like that i'm very i have a very hard time coming up with things on the fly and if i had known tish's target audience more thoroughly i would have given you some examples but that's just kind of a brief quick little thought so it's not that you're alienating people you are just selecting a specialty it's not that you can't work with people who do not fall under your specialty but when somebody comes to your website and they identify with the problem you solve, they are more likely to buy. When you have people on your website, you're basically talking directly to them. You want them to feel seen. You want them to be heard. You want them to feel like, oh my gosh, you are the person who can help them with that specific problem. So that's why it's not a bad thing to niche down and be very specific, especially on the above the fold section of the homepage on your website. So before you even add contact information or book appointment, you want to continue on the client journey. So I would remove this right here. So in this section, which I would keep this section, it illustrates what Tish offers. Now, instead of having what we do, I would change it to what I do. And I recommend this for small business owners who are solopreneurs. You are the only member of your business because people will be hiring you. And for something like what Tish does, where people are working with her one-on-one, -on -one, they want to know that they're working with her because they're hiring Tish not only for what she does, but for who she is. So you don't want to confuse your viewers by having we. You don't want to imply that there's more than one person on your team. You want them to really understand what it is that you do so I would change this to what I do or you can even omit this altogether I don't think it's necessary I think it's pretty obvious these sections are what you do so one thing I would recommend is reordering these recategorizing these my sense is that when tish offers nutrition and herbal medicine they're coinciding so they're services that she offers together so when somebody books a consultation with her specifically for the nutrition that healing aspect they would be hearing about nutrition and herbal medicine so i would have nutrition and herbal medicine and i would have a simple description like this and then link to a separate page that dives deeper into nutrition and herbal medicine. So I'm going to refer to my notes. So on that specific nutrition and herbal medicine page, explain how you use both nutrition and herbal medicine to heal your clients. However, I would avoid overwhelming viewers with information. So as we scroll down, Tish has a lot of information about featured herbs. I don't think this is necessary because people might not, your clients might not be working with these herbs. So unless there are a little handful of herbs that you would use with every single client, I wouldn't do a highlight with them. Instead, I would dive into this information specifically with your clients in your one-on-one -on -one appointment. However, you do have some really beautiful pictures. So if you wanted, you could include these pictures on that nutrition and herbal medicine page. But I wouldn't dive too deep into herbalism. I would instead focus on what areas you help your clients with, what health areas you help them with. Call that out so that way they can identify with them and know that you're the one to book with. And then I would also include the consultation info from, from here. I would include this on the Nutrition Herbal Medicine page as well as pricing and duration so if you only offer one hour sessions include the price if you offer one hour hour and a half include those prices if you offer packages like three sessions for three hundred dollars include those as well on this nutrition herbal medicine page and then i would also include an online booking window people love being able to book online people are more likely to book with you if they can book an appointment directly online i recommend using square it's that point of sale 
cash register type system that a lot of retailers use, but Square's also evolved to have an incredible online booking software. It's very easy to use, it's super intuitive. A lot of businesses use it. So the benefit of that is that a lot of clients are used to booking with it. So Square is pretty affordable. It's something that you can have on the side. You don't have to completely redo your website on Square. You can do what's called embedding, where you would just copy a string of code from Square and paste it into your website. And what that would do is create a booking page. So clients would come and they would see a calendar and they would select the date and they would select their service and they would book now. So it's very simple. I know it can seem like more of an undertaking than it actually is, but it definitely is worth the time that it takes to set up. So moving on, in therapy, so like I said, we are going to combine these two. Under this section, we're going to split them because yoga and Reiki, they are different. People, when they come to you for yoga, they're not likely going to come for you, come to you for yoga and Reiki unless you offer private yoga and they book private yoga with a private Reiki session. But my sense from what I've seen Tish do is that she teaches yoga classes, like group classes, and then offers Reiki in person. So that's why I would split those two. Also, I would eliminate therapy I mean you're obviously going to with yoga and then you're going to have Reiki somewhere else but if you decide not to split them I would change the word therapy I'm hesitant of using the word therapy unless you have something in front of it like massage therapy because when when you see therapy on its own you equate it with uh, like licensed mental health type therapy so I would just reevaluate that So for yoga, I would have yoga, you know, keep this little section and then link to a separate yoga page. And on that yoga page, include the description of class types. There are many different types of yoga, so explain which types you offer. And then include a calendar of upcoming events right on that yoga page, or you can link to a separate classes page. So we'll get into the classes page a little bit later, but I would definitely include a place where people can see your upcoming classes and then if you do book private yoga classes include information on that like pricing and then you can also include a contact box right on that yoga page to make it really easy for people to get in touch with you about booking a private yoga session And then similar with your Reiki page, include information about what Reiki is a little more in depth and what your prices are, the duration of your appointments, and then you can also embed the online booking form on that page or you can link to a separate online booking page on your website, which I recommend doing both. You want to make it super easy for people to book with you. You want to make it super easy for people to buy with you. So it may feel like you're being repetitive and redundant. That is a good thing. So I do recommend having a completely separate page in your navigation that's book a session on top of having the book a session box on each of your service pages and then on that booking box you can have all of your different services so when people go to book with you you'll know if they're booking Reiki or if they're booking nutrition herbal medicine and then they can see the price they can also book the duration of their appointment if you offer different durations Also, you can consider including an intake form with your online booking. So if you want to get to know people a little bit more, you can ask them questions like, what what would you like to heal from? What results are you looking for? Tell me a little bit about what you're experiencing. So by the time you sit down with them, you have a more clear picture of who it is that you're working with and what you're going to help them resolve. So back to the classes page that I mentioned, similar to the booking page, I would recommend having a full page dedicated just to your classes. And then if you can also include a calendar of upcoming classes on the yoga page, I would do that too. But at the very least have a classes page. And if you can categorize it based on the class type and location. So let's say that you offer herbalism classes, you would categorize, you would add a tag to all of those classes. And so an herbalism tag to the herbalism classes and then a yoga tag to the yoga classes. So when somebody comes to your classes page, they can click on the yoga tag and just see all of the yoga classes if they're only 
only interested in yoga and vice versa for herbalism. And then also, I know that Tish teaches at a few different locations in the area, so she can add a location tag too. So if there's somebody who only takes yoga, who they only like to go to this one specific studio, they can click and they can see all the classes at that studio. And if your classes can be booked online, include payment information or a link of where the class can be booked. So for example, if the studio that you're teaching at offers online booking, include the link to to their booking platform. Moving down to the about us section this should totally be its own page like i said earlier people are not just hiring tish for what she does but for who she is so this is the opportunity when they can get to know her another option is to to really convince people to book with you is to offer a free 30 minute meet and greet i know that's not feasible for all businesses so you really want that about page to pack a punch so instead of including Tisha's credentials here in the teaser on the homepage, I would write something like, hi there, I'm Tish and I help target market heal from your specialty and include a button called learn more that links to the about page. So that little teaser is going to kind of draw people in and introduce them to you. And then when they go to the full about page, go more in depth of your history. Why did you choose the modalities that you chose? Why did you choose a specialty that you've done? And then you can have a list of your credentials. You can also have the mission statement on that about page. And then as you are mentioning different services, link to those pages. Linking within your website allows people to be guided through your website, but it's also great for search engine optimization, which helps people find your website in Google. That is a whole other topic, so I just wanted to mention it briefly. Finally, down here on the contact, in the contact section, I would recommend just scooting this contact box to a completely separate contact page. What you really want people to do is book with you and you don't really want people going to a contact page. You want your contact page to be general is what I'm trying to say. Where you want people to funnel to is your more specific contact stuff, like being able to book with you. Or if you have a specific contact page on that yoga page for private yoga, you can ask specific questions. When somebody fills out a contact form, you want it to be as specific as possible. So a general contact form is kind of the last stop. You want people to go through the other specific means of getting in touch first. Now you can also add additional questions to your contact form. If you go to my website, missmegabug.com forward slash contact, you can see the questions that I ask and it really helps people be specific. So that way I can help them. I can do a much better job at connecting them with the resources they need or answering their question. And I'm sorry, I thought we were ending with contact, but I totally forgot. We have a footer down here. Now the footer, just like the header, is the same on every single page of your website. It is also important real estate because it does repeat. So in the footer, I would include your contact information if possible, depending on your website platform. I would scoot all of this stuff down here. I would include, instead of to make an appointment, please contact us, I would include a link to the book a session page. So what I would recommend doing is removing all of your contact information. Like I said above, remove your contact information. I know it's kind of counterintuitive, but the other reason why you want to remove your contact information from your website is because you will get so many spam emails and spam phone calls. Bots scan websites for email addresses and phone numbers. That's why a lot of websites use contact forms. So instead of listing your contact information, I would just include a link to the contact page. So in your footer, I would include another set of navigation. So duplicate the navigation at the header, in the header, down to the footer. So you would have all of your pages listed out. So just to remind you, the pages would be nutrition, herbal medicine, yoga, Reiki, about book an appointment, classes, and contacts. So I would list those out here in the footer so people can go to those pages. And then I would just update your copyright information to from 2018 to 2023 that keeps that active and also add your social media links because I know you're on Facebook and include a newsletter subscription box. Even if you don't 
have time or you're not ready to dive into an e-newsletter right now, start collecting emails. Email marketing is the most effective form of marketing other than word of mouth. It is proven to be more effective than social media. And the big thing is Facebook can up and disappear and you would lose all of your followers. On your newsletter list, even if your platform goes out of business, you own your list so you can export it and move it to another platform. Not only that, it is so hard to get your Facebook posts seen, whereas in email, everybody's guaranteed to receive it. They may not open it, but they're at least going to receive it. Just like people are not likely to see your social media posts, and if they do see it, they might scroll past them. So email is way more effective. Like I said, even if you don't plan on diving into email marketing just yet, at least have an option where people can enter their email addresses and when you go to teach classes bring an e-newsletter sign up sheet with you that people can write their information on and you can manually add them to your list if you don't have an e-newsletter platform i love flowdesk i highly recommend it but if you want to start out free mailchimp is a great option it is free for up to 2,000 subscribers that is the website audit for Healing Birch Studio in Bethlehem, New Hampshire. I hope you all learned something. If you would like to have a website audit of your business completed by me, enroll in my Debug Your Business membership. I do one website audit per month. So interested members would fill out an application form and I would randomly select from that set of people and do a website audit just like this. It is included in your membership so you don't have to pay anything extra. I've included a link down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.